so at antenna inputs okay as far as this television band is concerned 40 megahertz to 1 gigahertz these is the band for a television broadcast so n number of channels are modulated and are being broadcast in this specific band of 40 megahertz to 1 gigahertz so keep this in your mind so at an antenna input a very first block is rf amplifier mixer and local oscillator so let us consider on the upper side i have drawn a spectrum of band 3 channel 5 I don't know how many of you are able to recall what is this band 3 channel for you. But this band 3 channel for you is nothing but the program which is being broadcast from the Sihagada transmitter. That is DD National. Our Sihagada transmitter, the frequency band is 174 to 181 megahertz. So in your oral exam, they may ask you that what is the channel and what is the band of Sihangad television transmitter. Sihangad television transmitter is nothing but terrestrial broadcast. Sihangad television transmitter is nothing but a terrestrial broadcast. So in which 174 to 181 megahertz, this is the spectrum selected in which the audio and video information is broadcast. Audio is frequency modulated. And video, there are two parts, black and white and color. Black and white information is MVSB modulated and color information is QAM modulated. So please keep this in your mind that at the input of your antenna or input of your television receiver is nothing but this band 3 channel for you. So when it is given to RF amplifier, mixer and local oscillator, okay, the mixing of two frequencies is done. That is local oscillator and incoming frequency. So the beating is done and the difference frequency is available. So output of mixer is always intermediate frequency. So as we know that for television, two different informations are there. Audio information and video information. Accordingly, two different intermediate frequencies are there. One is video IF and another is audio IF. For audio IF, the frequency is 33.4 megahertz and video IF is 38.9 megahertz. So keep this in your mind that your video signal which was AMVSB modulated at the input of RM amplifier and frequency modulated audio is coming as it is at the output of mixer by down converting it. Okay. So video signal is down converted to 38.9 megahertz and audio signal is down converted and it is available at 33.4 megahertz. So two intermediate frequencies are available at the input of this common amplifier stage. So very first block of your black and white television receiver is tuner which consists of RF amplifier, mixer and local oscillator. So second stage is nothing but common IF amplifier where video IF and sound IF both are amplified and the output of this common amplifier is given to video detector. So all of you give attention that the video detector from video detector there are three outputs always. One goes to sound section, another goes to AGC and sync separator section and third it goes to video amplifier and finally to CRT display. So always there are three outputs from the video detector. So what is done at the input of video detector 38.9 megahertz and 33.4 megahertz. These two video IF and audio IF. These two signals are beated and 5.5 megahertz audio intercarrier sound frequency is generated. Why again this down conversion is done? I have already explained you in my practical session that initially the band is 174 to 181 megahertz. It is down converted to 38.9 and 33.4 megahertz after tuner. And again after video detector, this 5.5 megahertz trap circuitry is there. Just please check this 
trap circuitry is there again this audio signal is converted into 5.5 megahertz intercarrier sound frequency this down conversion is done and thereafter 5.5 megahertz fm radio receiver is there so 5.5 megahertz fm radio receiver demodulates the fm modulated signal and audio is amplified and it is given to the loudspeaker so audio output is available from the loudspeaker so please keep this in your mind that 174 to 181 megahertz is converted into 38.9 and 33.4 megahertz and from this again it is converted to 5.5 megahertz intercarrier sound frequency and then it is demodulated and sound is available from the output of this loudspeaker so this is the very first stage second the output of video detector goes to video amplifier so video is nothing but hello hello ha sir ha bola hello just a minute हाँ हेलो बोला कोणाला काय विचारायचं आहे का नाही सर नाही सर हॅलो नाही सर नाही काही विचारायचं अच्छा ठीक आहे कोणीतरी रेज केलं होतं म्हणून मी सांगतो ओके फाईन ऐकू येत नाही व्यवस्थित हो सर हा ठीक आहे फाईन सर so please keep this in your mind that video detector is nothing but see this this spectrum or this time domain waveform indicates video signal and this indicates frequency modulated signal this indicates am vsb modulated video so video detector is nothing but normal diode detector which detects the video signal and from that video signal if you see okay this video is detected video amplified and given to the cathode of this picture tube where this video signal video signal is converted into picture information so the function of a picture tube is to convert a video signal into picture information what is the function of camera camera converts picture information into video signal likewise this picture tube converts video information into video signal into picture information please keep this in your mind now practical exam point of view oral exam point of view you just see these two controls are shown over here contrast control and brightness control so normally the question is asked in your oral exam what is the difference between contrast control and brightness control so brightness control is nothing but a control which is connected to the grid control grid of this picture tube whereas contrast control is nothing but the control of this video amplifier gain of video amplifier is being changed with the help of this contrast control so you might have seen on your television that if you change the contrast control the picture details they are going to be varied that is the function of this contrast control whereas brightness control brightness control controls the brightness of display that's all so please try to understand the basic difference between contrast control and brightness control contrast control actual video information which is 0 to 5 megahertz the amplitude and the details are going to be changed are going to be varied whereas in brightness control the brightness of the display is going to be changed so this brightness control right now it is connected to the control grid of this picture tube hence the brightness is controlled if you go for led tv lcd tv this brightness is controlled by the backlight please try to understand so brightness control is completely different and contrast control is completely different now you have understood that from video detector three outputs are available one goes to sound section so frequency modulated audio is demodulated and it the audio output is available from the loudspeaker second thing the output of video detector goes to video amplifier where the video signal is amplified and given to the cathode of picture tube 
and hence video signal is converted into picture information that is the function of picture tube now all of you give attention the third output of this video detector through video amplifier goes to the sync separator all of you see the lower part of your block diagram lower part that is sync separator just try to recall in composite video signal apart from pure video signal what are other uh, uh, signals which we have seen h sync signal that is h synchronization pulses v synchronization pulses h blanking pulses v blanking pulses so try to understand this thing this is to synchronize the transmitter and receiver this is to synchronize the transmitter and receiver so the third output which is coming from this video detector through video amplifier it's coming down and it is connected to the sync separator se section where the h sync pulses and v sync pulses are separated now you are aware of h sync pulses the frequency is 15625 hertz standard and v sync pulses that is 50 hertz so all of you give attention 15625 hertz horizontal frequency which is high frequency is shown the lowest part that is differentiator is shown that is cr circuit and 50 hertz is given to rc circuit that is integrator so high frequency 15625 hertz is given to the differentiator circuit and which drives this h oscillator and accordingly the ramp waveform of 15625 hertz is generated and given to the h coil so h coil output is coming from h oscillator section accordingly v coil output or v coil input is nothing but the output of vertical oscillator so all of you give attention sync separator okay the signal which is coming from video amplifier connected to the sync separator sync separator separates h sync pulses v sync pulses h sync pulses that is horizontal synchronization pulses the frequency is high that is 15625 hertz and if you go for vertical sync pulses the frequency is 50 hertz horizontal sync pulses drives h oscillator vertical sync pulses drives v oscillator v oscillator output is a v ramp that is vertical ramp of 50 hertz and h oscillator output is 15625 hertz ramp output so v oscillator output goes to vertical coil and h oscillator output after amplification goes to h coil so h coil and v coil so what is the function of h coil and v coil h coil is responsible to move the electron beam from left to right and vertical coil is responsible to move the beam from top to bottom so horizontal coil is responsible to move the beam from left to right and vertical coil is responsible to move the beam from top to bottom so left to right and top to bottom accordingly that raster that is the picture information is scanned and displayed on this picture tube all of you give attention now you have understood what is the function of this h sync and v sync pulses h sync pulses v sync pulses drives h oscillator v oscillator so the output of it is connected to h coil and v coil so h coil is responsible to move the frame, move the beam from left to right and vertical oscillator or vertical coil is responsible to move the beam from top to bottom so left to right and top to bottom the video signal is converted into picture information one more section is connected to this picture tube that is nothing but eht rectifier this question is normally asked in your oral examination so what is the function of this eht rectifier eht stands for extra high tension and the lower part is a rectifier what is this extra high tension extra high tension is nothing but the supply which is given to the final accelerating anode of picture tube so this picture tube is nothing but one type of display that is crt display so in your practical session i have already explained you 
there are n number of types of displays are there number 1 crt display number 2 led display lcd display plasma display lcd projector and so on so this is a very basic type of uh, a television display that is known as cathode ray tube your entire first unit indicates that a camera is made up of tube that is crt tube and your television display is also made up of cathode ray tube so cathode ray tube and other displays right now they are in market one more thing i have already elaborated you in our laboratory that crt displays nowadays they are not being used what are the reason number 1 bulkiness number 2 power consumption number 3 if you want to enjoy the movie on the larger screen then this crt display becomes hazardous and more bulkier this is the reason nowadays everybody is going for led display lcd display plasma display or sometimes for cinema projectors so crt display cannot be manufactured after 32 inch this 32 inch display means the diagonal of the display always so more than 32 inch if you really want to manufacture the crt display then it becomes very much bulkier one more thing the extra high tension the lower the lowest block diagram if you see the lower part of this uh, block diagram eht rectifier approximately 1 to 1.1 kilo volt per inch extra high tension is required that is a dc voltage so this dc voltage is varying from 14 kilo volt to 33 kilo volt 14 kilo volt means 1414000 that is 14000 volt to 33000 volt why i am talking about 1.1 kilo volt per inch if the display size per inch if it is changing to 14 inch so 14 inch display normally your laptop screen 14 inch display so if it is a crt display instead of led display then 14000 dc volt is re required at the output of eht rectifier if it is 17 volt 17000 volt that is 17 kilo volt is required and if the size of crt display is 32 inch diagonal then approximately 33000 volt that is 33 kilo volt is required as a final accelerating anode so i have already explained this in your laboratory but this is very very important that h oscillator output is given to extra high tension rectifier where extra high tension is created see h oscillator output is around 150 volt ramp this 150 volt ramp output of 15625 hertz is given to to extra high tension circuitry so what is this extra high tension circuitry extra high tension circuitry we will see further nine two or three slides i will tell you what is this extra high tension or if possible i will go to that slide directly So all of you give attention. See, this is the circuitry which I have shown as an extra high tension circuitry. What is it? See, the output fifteen six twenty five hertz from this H oscillator is given to the transformer. This transformer is nothing but extra high tension transformer, where the primary turns are very less and secondary turns are huge. so what is happening with this transformer if 150 volt horizontal frequency that is 15625 hertz is given to the primary and if your secondary is boosted so it is boosted up to the level of c the range is given 25000 to 33 kilovolt for color television and for black and white television it is boosted to 15 to 18 kilovolt so just now i told you that per inch 1 kilovolt approximately extra high tension is required 
so this is the function of this transformer which boost the horizontal frequency to such a level so this kilovolt signal is boosted with the help of extra high tension transformer and this boosted signal is then rectified so try to understand extra high tension dc voltage is generated dc voltage is required as a final accelerating anode so if this 15625 hertz signal is boosted it has to be rectified so normally in oral exam such questions are asked ki what type of diode is used to rectify such high voltage so keep this in your mind i have already shared this uh, slides to you see in this upper part i have written tv20 type semiconductor diode so this kilovolt signal of 15625 hertz is boosted by this semiconductor diode of tv20 type and then it is rectified and it is filter out and then it is given to the final accelerating anode so where is that final accelerating anode so just go to this previous slide of block diagram and here all of you see this this eht rectifier eht rectifier just now i have shown the circuit of eht rectifier and this eht extra high tension boosted dc voltage that is given to the final accelerating anode so this is the final accelerating anode the potential of this final accelerating anode is positive so what is the effect of this positive voltage the electron beam which is generated from the cathode the electron beam which is generated from the cathode is accelerated and attracted because of this eht voltage because eht voltage is a positive voltage given to the final accelerating anode of this picture tube whereas the beam generated from this cathode is negatively charged so negatively charged beam is attracted by this positive high voltage it is nothing but attracting the electron beam of negative charge towards phosphor material of this picture tube this is the one way to uh, say this what is another way the high velocity electron beam is going to bombard on this phosphor material with very high velocity so after bombarding on this phosphor material with very high velocity the video signal is converted into picture information so what is the ultimate goal of this picture tube the ultimate goal of this picture tube when it is working as a display television display the basic function is to convert a video signal to convert the video signal into picture information so that is what the block diagram of this black and white television so now one second i am revising it so what is the function so initially the band tree channel file let us say i am talking about this spectrum is coming to the first block that is tuner tuner consisting of rf amplifier mixer local oscillator so the function of this tuner is to down convert the incoming frequency any incoming frequency that is from 40 megahertz to 1 gigahertz television spectrum it is converted into a, a standard video if and sound if of 38.9 megahertz and 33.4 megahertz respectively this video if and sound if is then amplified with the help of common amplifier common if amplifier the output of it output of it is given to video detector so video detector is nothing but a diode a non linear device so as i told you the output of this video detector there are three output one goes to fm demodulated fm demodulation section another goes to video amplifier section and third from video amplifier it goes to a sync separator section the first section of this the first section the first section is nothing but fm demodulator section which demodulates the fm modulated audio and given to the loud speaker and the loud speaker converts audio signal into sound second goes to video amplifier which amplifies the video signal and given to the cathode of picture tube cathode of picture tube generates electron beam So what is the function of this television tube to convert a video signal coming to the cathode into picture information that is the function of picture tube and third output from this video amplifier goes to the sync separator 
sync separator separates two different signal one is x sync and another is v sync x sync frequency is 15625 hertz whereas v sync frequency is 50 hertz h sync drives h oscillator v sync drives v oscillator h oscillator output is a ramp of 15625 hertz v oscillator is a ramp of 50 hertz 50 hertz is given to v coil and 15625 hertz ramp output is given to h coil thus h coil is responsible to move the electron beam from left to right and vertical coil is responsible to move the beam from top to bottom thus a video signal which is applied at the input of your cathode is converted into picture information one more output is coming from this horizontal output amplifier is given to the eht rectifier eht is nothing but extra high tension eht consisting of a transformer whose primary turns are less and secondary turns are more so according to the principle of n1 by n2 is equal to v1 by v2 the output is boosted rectified and this dc voltage is acting as a final accelerating anode to this crt display because of this positive voltage approximately 1.1 kilovolt per inch accordingly if you consider the 32 inch display of this uh, television mm -hmm. then the eht voltage goes up to 33000 volt and thus the video signal the video signal is converted into picture information with the help of this crt picture tube please keep this in your mind now the entire block diagram of this black and white television is uh, completed now all of you give attention see this there are two types of tuners very first block diagram of your television is nothing but tuner there are two types of tuner one is mechanical tuner this is known as mechanical tuner i don't know how many of you are aware of this but uh, we in our uh, 20 years before we used to have this type of mechanical tuner so nowadays also black and white televisions are available in the market so with the help of this knob you can select a channel and accordingly uh, the channel can be selected nowadays electronic tuner they are coming in a market so electronic tuner you have to tune the different bands that is vhf band uhf band lhf ehf band so all these bands are tuned with the help of this electronic tuner there are two types of electronic tuner manually that is with the help of potentiometer you can select this a channel or second thing is with the help of infrared remote control so nowadays everybody every television is equipped with infrared remote trans receiver circuitry so with the help of remote control you are operating this infrared sensor which is there inside this television and accordingly you are selecting the different channel channel 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 etc so now you might have understood that there are two types of tuners which is a very first block of your television receiver that is tuner so tuner consists of rf amplifier mixer local oscillator so there are two types of tuner one is mechanical tuner and second is electronic tuner nobody is using mechanical tuner nowadays everybody is using electronic tuner so electronic tuner there are two types of controls with the help of potentiometer you can select a channel and second is with the help of infrared remote control you can select a channel so nowadays infrared controlled based trans receiver is being used to select the channel or tune the channel next so this is rf amplifier mixer local oscillator this is the very first block of your uh, black and white television receiver then next is uh, video detector so this is the circuitry of video detector so a normal diode is there so if you consider this amvsb modulated video is detected with the help of this see amvsb modulated and frequency modulated 33.4 megahertz sound if and 38.9 megahertz amvsb modulated video if both are available so what is this 5.5 megahertz the beating of 38.9 megahertz and 33.4 megahertz signal is done and 5.5 megahertz is inter carrier fm sound signal is generated this is given to the fm section and accordingly fm demodulation is achieved and output of 
is nothing but a pure video signal which is given to video amplifier so video amplifier circuitry is shown over here see the output of the detector is given to video amplifier so video amplifier you have a contrast control and brightness control is nothing but a control grid the brightness of this picture tube is controlled with the help of brightness control where the gain of this video amplifier is controlled with the help of contrast control so these are two basic question normally asked in your oral exam so this is a video signal given to the cathode of picture tube which converts this video signal into picture information this is the EHT signal. One more thing, there are two types of AGC. You are aware of automatic gain control. If the MACB signal increases suddenly, then the output of your television sound increases suddenly. So, which is not good. So, what is the solution? The solution is automatic gain control. With the help of this automatic gain control, if MACB voltage increases suddenly, there should not be effect on your television sound output. That's why this is the first reason because of which the audio signal can be increased automatically, which is unwanted. And number two, the audio signal, let us say, if your house is near to broadcasting station, let us say near to Sinhagar transmitter, if any voltage is boosted at a single transmitter, because of that boosted level of power transmitted, the signal level which is received at a receiver end is going to be boosted and which causes the sudden increase in your sound output. So there are two reasons, MACB voltage increasing and second thing is sudden increase in transmitted level of transmitted signal to avoid that the automatic gain control circuitry is used in every receiver any communication receiver whether it is fm receiver whether it is am receiver or whether it is television receiver so in television receiver we have seen that the output of video amplifier is given as a negative feedback to the amplifier stage and if the level is boosted because of this negative feedback the signal is brought down to a normal level so sudden increase in video intensity sudden increase in sound intensity is completely avoided with the help of automatic gain control now all of you give attention automatic gun control okay in general communication receiver consisting of a signal and average value of that signal whereas in television receiver the signal is taken from the transformer and these keyed pulses the keyed pulses, keying pulses of 15,625 hertz with your signal is averaged and then the negative feedback is applied to the gain. So there are different types of delayed, uh, different types of AGCs are there, which we have already covered in our first assignment. That is no AGC, linear AGC, simple AGC and delayed AGC. So delayed AGC, this type of signal is always used in your television receiver. So that king pulses along with your video signal is averaged in your television receiver. So in your oral exam, such type of AGC is known as keyed AGC. So in oral exam, if it is asked by your examiner, okay, what type of AGC is used in your television receiver, then you should be able to answer that it is a delayed AGC that after a certain level only, the AGC is going to be applied and second point is nothing but a keyed AGC. 15,625 hertz keying pulses are averaged with the video signal. Hence, it is known as keyed AGC.